Okay, in this first video, what I'm going to do is I'll just cover some of the basics of, of my saddle system. Uh, I use a, a, a tree climber or arborist rope. And, and what I've done, I used to use a Prusik knot, but some of the guys over at saddlehunter.com came up with this idea of using a rope and then one ascender. And I, I'll tell you, I love it. That's what I'm using now. Uh, and then my platform is actually made from a lone wolf tree stand seat top. And then I took some one and a quarter inch aluminum, T70, 75 aluminum to make it. I used a lone wolf, uh, two lone wolf tree brackets. And I've got another video that kind of goes over that. But basically, let me, let me just step up into this and I'll clip in real quick just so you get an idea of how I set this up. All right, and it's a little twisted, but my, my lead is, but I don't care. Uh, basically, what I do is I set my rope height to be about nose level or eye level when I'm in a tree. I tried for years to use the higher hookup, and I just never could get comfortable. Uh, it hurt my knees and my, my butt. And really, this goes back to sixth grade physical science about fulcrums and pivot points and leverages and all that. By moving the leverage point down, you're distributing the weight or the pressure more on your knees and your your rear end at the same time. Uh, this is how I sit my saddle. And I'll tell you, I sit all day in my saddle and I really don't get that comfortable. If I start to get a little un uncomfortable, I might sit on the side for a while. And that will take it off of my knees and really take it off of my feet from standing. But 90% of the time, I'm sitting in the tree about like this now. around once so that in the event that I do need to pivot a little especially in a larger tree I can just relieve the rope pressure and with it only wrapped once it's very easy to move in any direction if the deer is moving that way and I anticipate a shot this way I'll move it around the tree that way and vice versa uh, the saddle itself I wear once I get in the tree I use it as a lining belt but once I get up in the tree I loosen it a little and then I slide it down to where it's actually just like sitting in the swing, my butt's resting on it. I don't like pressure on the back of my thighs. Uh, when I used a previous so saddle that had leg straps on it, it really gave me, I, I started having a lot of cramps in my legs. Um, so I, I don't like using that. Um, my bridge is actually a climber's runner with two climbing locking carboners or whatever they're called uh, that I got from a mountain climbing store. Uh, it's 36 inches long. It's a three foot bridge length. That's just what works best for me. I, I like a longer bridge and a shorter length here. And then uh, really that's it. I'm not gonna give you the name of the saddle manufacturer because I modified this. Um, but I will tell you that they make an incredibly good product. The sewing is top of the line. The materials, the workmanship, you can't ask for better product. And some of you will prefer to have you know the leg straps and the back support and some of the adjustability and all that. And you know what, that's great. I, I am not gonna knock that. Uh, everybody has what they like. I personally hunt a lot of public land and so I'm going in pretty deep, sometimes over two miles hiking. And uh, sometimes I'm using chest waders to go through swamps and stuff. So I like to be able to roll everything up and put it in my pack on top of my shoulders when I'm walking in. So I like something that's very compact, lightweight, because I'm usually hunting for the entire day and I'm carrying food and water and everything on my back. And then uh, I also like something that's quiet. I don't like a lot of metal on my saddle. The only metal that I've got that I have on this saddle is the two carbiners right here. That, that's it. And uh, well, I guess you can consider the rope in this on my rope also, but I consider that separate of the saddle. But I don't like any buckles and straps and, and all that extra stuff I just I want to keep it as minimal as I can uh, but now here's a disclaimer I don't recommend modifying any equipment without checking with your manufacturer for safety in the end we all have to do risk analysis and assume within our capabilities and how we hunt and stuff what our risk factors are and what we're willing to accept and mitigate 
I've evaluated my system and I'm absolutely happy with it and I'm going to demonstrate some of the safety in it here in a little bit. Uh, I'm happy with it. I'll tell you, to me, the most dangerous part of hunting out of a saddle is climbing up and down with a lineman's belt on those sticks. We all do it and, it, you know, one step, step breaks and down we go and there's a chance of impelling ourselves and stuff. So to me, that's the critical aspect as far as safety. Once you're in the tree and you have a tight lead rope and you're hooked in and stuff like that, I feel really safe in this system, even if my platform breaks. And like I said, I'll demonstrate some of that in a future video. Anyway, I'm going to get down now and get ready for the second video where I will demonstrate actually shooting from the saddle. If you have any comments on any of the videos that I'm doing, please put them on there. You know, I, I listen to anyone and uh, I'd love to hear what you say and hopefully these videos will answer some of the questions on how I'm using a saddle on my platform.